You might as well do it too, just in case. Uh, yeah, I'll do okay. it as well. One, two, three, here we go. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody, it's Laura Eisenhower. Welcome to this awesome gathering I have with two really wonderful people. I'm so excited to have them with me today. Seth Leaf Prudzanski and Raquel Spring. Raquel Spring is a very, very, very good astrologer. This runs in the family too, right? So yes, like yeah, this fourth generation. Fourth generation. Yeah. So we're going to dive into all sorts of things. And um, yeah, we've we've all gathered together before. It's been a while. And of course, Seth Leaf Prezansky, who does the beautiful meditations every week for us. And he is the author of The Fight to Enlight. And yes, so much about mastery over our thoughts, our mental body, how to really shift our perspective in a way that serves us when facing challenge and with the two of you, I, I just can't wait to see where we're going to go. We're going to talk about the eclipse. We're going to talk about April Fool's Day and just how we're not going to be fooled again, right? There's been so much trickery that is constantly thrown at us from every angle. And yeah, like what what is the, what is the significance of these times, particularly the eclipse? So Raquel, you as an astrologer, I know you have a lot of insights on this and you've been speaking a lot about it. What can you share with us? about this particular eclipse season mm -hmm. and then Seth yeah share your thoughts there is so much to share on this eclipse but I'll start with a general overview and say that this is really a time of waking up waking up it's a time to wake up and that's what this solar eclipse is really about at the end of the day we are looking at a very exciting and fast month in this month of April. And the eclipse in Aries is also very much ushering in this year of the dragon that we are already in. Uh, the Aries energy is associated with fire. And this is also an addition to the whole waking up energy coming through, which is the, the inauguration, if you will, of the year of the dragon that is really in full force from this moment on out. The waking up is also due to Pluto, who just recently entered Aquarius. This is the bigger picture of waking up that we're all navigating during this time, and it's just the beginning, not going anywhere. So the Aries eclipse is working together with this new energy from Aquarius that is coming to the planet. Uh, this is the bigger picture of transformation for our civilization, and the sign of Aries is in a sextile with Aquarius. So this really ushers in that momentum of waking up. The sign of Aries, again, it's fire. It's all about action, passion, uh, being put into action, and all of us taking that next step to whatever that means for us moving forward. Totally. Action instead of reaction, <laughs> just mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. And with the Chiron influence, in Aries and lots of planets surrounding this eclipse also in Aries. Yeah. It's very interesting because we're reflecting on the South node, you know, where are we out of balance when we need to take that step with our relationships, with ourself? It's like so powerful. And, and of course the worldly events taking place and the constant threats breathing down our neck is intense. What are your thoughts about all that Seth? Like, how are you feeling about that? And, and both of you, yeah. Talk about, just how you navigate what's always coming at us and how you might prepare. So what are your thoughts, Seth? So, yeah, I've had the fortunate blessing to do projects with both of you. And as we all know about each other, the mental, like the knowingness of all these different concepts, I kind of get it, but more than anything, I feel it, you know, because a lot of people will go, oh, how do you think you know all this stuff? But if you, like really express that you feel it like you feel the sun hit your face that's how stars have an effect on our bodies and so when you say that and you observe it and you look at it people begin to realize like okay if the sun a star 100 million miles away is having that much of an effect what are the other ones doing and as we know things are so <laughs> look where we're headed you know Look at this world we're in. Look at everything that's happening. My God, it is amazing. So powerful. Especially to think that we can become so powerful when we 
let go of all the old social indoctrination belief systems, all the different types of conditioning that most have accepted as normal is suddenly not so normal. So. Yeah, the Aries Libra axis is a world axis. Mm. And it's important to notice that because we are and we will continue seeing a lot in the world front take place, you know, with the focus in Aries and Libra, it's we're just beginning. We're just beginning a period of, in my opinion, it's uh, about three years. The next three years is all about world shifts. So we've been going through these increments of three years, three years, three years, being that the first three years were really the beginning of the end of the old. So that's where everything started to just kind of disintegrate before our eyes. And this is this, th we start now in 2024, in the next three years, we're really looking at a turning point. So in order for this turning point to occur, we need to go through the breaking point. And so this is what this eclipse is initiating. It's really heralding that turning point. So this is going to be uh, world events that we're going to be looking at. But as I always like to bring it back to ourselves, this is also a turning point for us. So if we're looking at the axis of Libra and Aries, this is where the eclipses are happening. The last eclipse we had two weeks ago was in uh, Libra, and now this upcoming one is in Aries. So we really are working with this, this dynamic here of relationships and others versus self. This is also where the world axis is and where we will see world relations very much in focus. But remember, this is for the purpose of the restructuring. This is really our aim at the end of the day. When I spoke in the beginning about waking up, it's about waking up to a new consciousness, a new way of operating, a new way of seeing reality. And this is the foundation for the next stage of governments and the world and everything else, the entire restructuring that we're getting ready for. But it's not going to happen without you taking action. So that's what the Aries eclipse is about. With the south node in Libra, it's indicating the release, the release of outdated relationships, outdated relationship models. And I want you to take a moment and feel into what that means for you. Outdated relationship models that are ready to shift. For this reason, you may see that many relationships around you are and will continue crumbling. And not in a bad way, but just in a way to make way for new ways of relating to others. So one of the key signatures to me with this release point in relationships is the, to me, one of the outdated models is codependency. So this is one of the things that we're collectively releasing is that need for the other. Even our twin flame or even our you know, soulmate or however you want to look at it and call it to compliment you, to do this with you, to show up with you so that you can then dot, dot, dot. This is really a time for you to focus on you. And I was even, I, I just did a podcast the other day on this uh, conjunction with Chiron that I'll speak into in a bit, but it really is, you know, the focus is on us and even more than wanting to go out there and heal others, we really need to focus on ourselves because this is a time right now for us to step into our own independence. This is regardless of what other people say, other people's expectations, even other ways of operating with others in your life to really gain a hold of your voice your truth, and your sovereignty so that you can be fully responsible for your freedom. And that is the ultimate message of the Aries eclipse is your sovereignty, your freedom. So stop pointing the finger and blaming others for where you're at. This is a time for all of us to step into our own leadership and from this place of wholeness and fullness within we then step forward to meet the world, to heal others, to form partnerships. My so gosh. Yes. That's what being a fourth generation astrologer, 
sounds like <laughs> to have <laughs> that deep knowing my gosh I know it's so good. It's so good. Gosh, you know, and, and our relationship to the system and the dependency bond, right? Like you're saying, uh, just, you know, how people are looking outside themselves, the problem reaction solution game, that codependency bond with that paycheck, with that system and really facing the wounds, you know, of your ego identity of your warrior self. Like, where has that been harmed? Where has that been compromised? You know, for some that are awakened, they might feel the exhaustion of just putting it out there and being censored or or being smeared or um, or they might be doing really well and taking action and really building, you know, new earth and um, just staying true to the mission. I, I think that's a given with anybody who's in touch with that. But seeing how this next generation or this generation of our children right now, how they're being born with this nodal axis that they will be moving into the north node aries chiron in their charts looking at you know where the indoctrination or the gender confusion has harmed that ego identity so us as the guardians need to really be advocates and really call it out to make sure that we're stepping in alignment with what we need to do to protect them it's like really wild seeing what's going on in the world my gosh yeah you know, as sad. you say that it's like just, you know, when all the madness and everything, the confusion that's happened over the past few years that seemingly came out of nowhere. For me personally, it was like, I always thought I was born at the wrong time. You know, my parents were hippies, just part of like that whole thing of the 60s. And I believed that I was like, yep, born at the wrong time. I'm just here, whatever. But then when all this stuff started to happen, then it was like, oh, my God, I'm born at the perfect time. Because back then when it was just national, now it's global. And to all of us to be a part in that, this is way bigger than anything anybody in all of our families has faced or gone through. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's freaking awesome. Oh, my God. And it's painful. It's definitely painful. Of course, it's going to be. Yeah, there is a point of recreation that is happening right now. It's important for us to not lose sight of that because mm -hmm. there is and there will continue to be so much crumbling. There is and will continue to be so much, especially on a world front, that needs to disintegrate. We need to lose our faith and our hope in the current government. This needs to happen in order for the new to come in. And mm -hmm. it's not going to be a variation of the already existing models. It's gonna be something brand new. And we need to be conscious enough to initiate that, to direct where th that flow is gonna be. So for example, us taking more of the power in our hands between our communities, between our state, for example, between our the towns around, instead of waiting for one leader for the whole country to dictate how things are gonna go. You know, and so that's why this time is so important for us to first of all focus on us and the transformation that we're going through. This is a rebirth. We've gone through a big phase of the death, in, especially in 2022 and 2023. They've all been strongly characterized by the death, the end with the Saturn T square, the lunar nodes for most of 2022. Then Pluto T squared the lunar nodes in most of 2023. That was our chance to die. <laughs> so if you're still here, if you're still here, you're here for a reason. Mm. And we've all gone through this death process in some way, shape, or form. And it has been exactly so we could be here at this threshold that is being initiated by the airy solar eclipse, which is where we are born anew. This is why we need to focus on us. That's why the focus is you. Forget others right now. Focus on the birth that is happening within you. You are the new leader of tomorrow. You are responsible for the direction of our future. Yes. Yes. And then when you think about the Saturn, Pisces, Neptune, Pisces, Jupiter, Uranus conjunction, that's a lot of like accelerated light energy, higher self blasts, epiphanies, synchronicities. And then... I, I, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like it helps to purify the Neptune and break down 
the programs, ancestral patterns, you know, the dogmas of religion, the giving our power away on the spiritual level. Because, you know, Saturn really wants to ground that Neptune energy, but infect it with belief systems that further ensnarl one into just providing that, you know, life force and the creative imagination to, to, to be the battery for these artificial timelines that would only exist if, that only do exist if we fuel it and give it the power, because it's all parasitic. It's, I love what you just said, because it's so true. And, and it's so like, and I, I was going to say, I love everything you just said right now. Like whoever's listening, you should rewind and listen to that again. What Laura oh just God. said, it's so important what you just said, because this, this, um, how do you say, like, if I had to give it a phrase, it's like the illusions are falling out of everywhere in, in society, including spirituality. That is why uh, Saturn is in Pisces right now is to help all of those illusions to fall, the, the rose colored glasses. And this is a pivotal year for that because by next year and most effectively by 2026, that's when the planet Neptune is going to leave Pisces for good and enter Aries again, the sign of waking up. So we are right now in a very delicate phase where these illusions, this the things that we used to have our a sense of idealism toward, even so many of the, the movies that we watch or the movie industry, the entertainment industry, spirituality, religion, um, and even aspects of the government where we haven't really been wanting to face the truth behind what is, that is all gonna be crumbling especially by next year. So this year we begin to see preparations for that happening. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah, and then the nodes are switching to uh, North Node Pisces mm -hmm. and South Node um, Virgo. A lot yeah. about the body, mind, spirit communication. And, and, and I think these times are just really unsettling. And Seth, you're really good at facing adversity and finding that higher perspective when when you get sort of blasted, how quickly does it resolve? I mean, you you're 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 like a sort of pro athlete at this at this point when when it comes to something trying to kind of knock you off center. Um, I mean the meditations, right? Yeah. That's that's really been the tool for you or the the modality or the medium that works, right? Because focused intent and grounding into that, right? So you both have been saying it, but a lot of people thought that the events of the past few years were, you know, about collective awakening, but a bunch of us already kind of knew that it wasn't collective. It's about us. It all starts with us. It's a personal awakening because to have the masses shift that much where we as a species are on this evolution or expedited evolution it's going to take enough of us doing this individually together to create that hundredth monkey or that whatever, the millionth monkey. We go on and on about it. But yeah, a lot of it is, it's not just meditation. It's the choice. You know, that's why I smile a lot because when I smile, I feel that feeling in my body. And the more I practice it and feel it and all the things that I do, with that feeling of the smile that I initiate, that I choose to put on my face, it changes and amplifies. It starts being able to become feelings that there aren't words for, but they're very real. And, you know, I think a lot of people out of just struggling and not knowing how to deal with their own process, they get stuck in their head, you know? And so being in every part of your body, like, you're everywhere you're in the little toe you're in the back of your head you are everywhere and so to be that embodied is what helps me get out of all the things that can suck you down totally what about you raquel when 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 yeah just some sort of and, and i know there's always some kind of threat right there's always something like oh cern and just all this stuff surrounding this eclipse and world events and things shutting down and transportation it's almost like we're being prepared for a lot of um the breaking down right that needs to happen but the inversion part of it just really wants to drag us into that fear um how how do you sort of handle all that and and with 
the astrological knowledge, you know, knowing there's higher octaves of these planetary alignments that are for our betterment and growth versus the inversions that want to suck us in. How, what is the validity of those kind of warnings to you and how do you kind of cope with that or what practices do you do to kind of keep yourself aligned and centered? Yeah, I, I know that to a great extent, a lot of this is truly inevitable. It's part of the course that we are signed up for. Um, and it is also part of the greater evolutionary process for us individually and also for the planet. So knowing that just as a starting point already puts me in my heart and in my center, because I know that there are certain things that just need to be a certain way. Uh, and so in a big way, it really is about just trusting. And there are certain things that will be beyond our immediate control, but how we respond to it really does make all the difference. So when you first of all know that in the greater picture, everything is exactly as it should be, so that your generations and their children and so forth can have a different future. If you know that in your heart, if you know that we are at a catalyst for change right now, and you trust in that, you can go through whatever is necessary, whatever you have signed up to go through, knowing that it is aligned with your and the world's highest good. Now, on a practical level, something that always helps me is the breath. And I love Seth's tip of smiling. I'm going to try that one more often as well, because it's true. When you smile, you're you're literally sending signals right from the nervous, uh, the, the, the nerve endings in your in your face to you're literally sending signals of happiness and contentment to your brain. So I love that one. Um, but breath is one that I it always just brings me back to the present and having that long, deep inhale. And then the long exhale, this is a, a great way to put you in touch with your body and with the present moment. Because when you're in a state of fear, you're not in the body. You're worrying about the future or you're trying to figure out how you're going to defend or protect yourself. And it, things just go crazy from that point. So breath is a, is a really good and important one that I personally like to use. I do, I do feel it's important to, to men, make mention though of uh, Chiron because, you know, since we are talking about this, you know, any fears or, or things that may come up during this time, uh, this solar eclipse in Aries is happening exactly, exactly, exactly conjunct Chiron, which is pretty fascinating. There can be many forms of conjunction where you can start a degree away and in some cases even 10 degrees away that can be considered a conjunction. But this conjunction of the solar eclipse and Aries is exact to the degree and the minute. It's like as exact as it gets. So the closer it is, obviously the stronger the energy is. And so Chiron is really being highlighted in this eclipse. You know, this energy of Chiron, who most of you may be aware of as the wounded healer. So it's important to notice this energy very alive for us in this eclipse because the energy of Chiron really represents healing at the end of the day. But this is not about going out and saving the world, going out and trying to heal the world. This is really about your healing, the healing of your independent thinking and action that is not based on waiting for this or waiting for that. This is really a phase where the new leaders of the planet are ready to emerge. And if you feel a yes in your heart, as I say these words, you can know that this is your time. This is why we have so many other very exciting alignments happening, like Jupiter and Uranus conjunct in Taurus happening at the end of April. And then Jupiter enters Gemini, which is really going to activate Pluto and Aquarius, and really just a preparation as well for next year's Uranus entering Gemini. 2026 is really where everything's going to start to happen, because this is really about a revolution of consciousness that is happening. 
So there are going to be some exciting events coming in and speeding things along. But in order for us to really show up 100% ready for this new phase of leadership and awareness, we have to look at ourselves. And that includes our wounds. That includes the things that we've been repressing, holding back, maybe waiting for another or blaming another, or it's always about the other component outside of us. But Chiron and Aries is really about healing the wound of independence and sovereignty. And nobody can heal that wound for you. You are the one who has to take ownership of that. And this is where I've been speaking a lot into the fire energy of the Aries eclipse. This is a time to own your fire, which may include your heightened emotions. Own your emotions. Own your wounds. And own your power. Because Aries is simultaneously an energy of action. So there is equally so the ability for us to find uh, resilience and the ability to spring forth, to bounce back into leadership. But only if we are humble enough to first look at our wounds, because they will be surfacing. This eclipse will be bringing to the fore anything that we may have been feeling tender or vulnerable or wounded about. But not so you can look on the outside, but so you can take responsibility for your wounds, your emotions, your fire, so that you can then step into your dragon energy moving forward, sure. which is your power. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, when you think of people that are unconscious to their wounds or just not wanting to look at it, they act out or they just have misplaced anger. They don't know what to do with it. They they just can sense you know, something's off, but it's it's very hard, you know, sometimes with that Aries energy to find that, you know, humility. And so it'll be interesting with the Mercury retrograde, Venus, moon and sun also all in Aries, just like, whoa, um, that heart energy, that Venus energy, I'm, I'm, I'm sure will help. But as an astrologer, like, what do you make of like the squared aspects when you see a chart and there's just a lot of squares, like how mm -hmm. does one handle that? Because you know, sometimes I'd love to just fly into the cosmos and just rearrange the planets a little bit. Like, no, 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 get off this part of my chart. I mean, you know, we're not so ruled by it. We have to understand, you know, these challenges can be catalysts. But when you see a lot of squares, though, what is your first impression? Do you go, oh, man, like, what do you tell this person? Or like, how do you frame it? Like, how how do you work with it that can help a person deal with what might look to be, you know, endless challenges mm -hmm. if, if they learn about what some astrologers might interpret it as like malefic or or uncomfortable or conflict and tension. Like how do you, how do you kind of interpret squares for people? Mm. I love that question because I was actually just having a a session with one of my clients and speaking exactly about this because my client had a, a planet that was both in a square with another planet and also in a trine with another planet. So helping my client understand the difference between the trine and the square from the same planet. And it was really, really great. So I'm going to use the same explanation. I think you're going to love this one. So you can think of, let's say that you have a planet in your chart and that planet in your chart is receiving a trine and a square. How do you make the, how, what is the difference between that planet's trine and the, that planet's square? Well, that planet, you start with the planet that is receiving that square or the trine or both. That planet in your chart is time for action for that planet. It's time for action. So the way that I explained it was imagine that you are inside a car and that car is ready to go. Now, when that planet, that car that is ready to go and move forward is receiving a trine, you can stay in the car. And all you do is you press the, the pedal and you just, you know, work your little things here and there and the car starts to go. Now, with the square, the car is also ready to go. But in this case, you have to get out of the car and you have to give it a few pushes 
there's something with the car that it doesn't just start on the automatic. You actually have to get out of the car, use a little physical strength and push the car, give it a few pushes and use that strength, which is characteristic of the square. So the square is when something requires action from you. Usually there is some sort of a physical action toward the event or around the event. And if you don't take the action, life will make you take action. So other things around you or people around you will somehow instigate the action from you. This can be an emotional action. It can be a physical action. But the square is a lot more instigating of that action than the trine. But both in both cases, in both scenarios, that planet is ready for action. It's just how you take action that makes the difference with the square. Yeah, I like that interpretation. What about if it doesn't have any trines and it's just squares? Then it's full. That's a lot of just action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'll tell you what, you know, people that have squares in their chart, they also have the ability to take action. That's the beautiful thing about if you're looking at a natal chart, which is a configuration that is always there, you go through different stages of learning how to take action around that energy. And this creates strength. It really, it creates a sort of a proactive spirit, which is correspondent to leadership. And so the ability is there for strength, for leadership. And it really just depends on how you go about it. Because the square can also cause a lot of... Uh, um, defensiveness. That's one of the shadows of the square is when you get defensive about something. And when you get defensive, you can either hide and that's when your emotions get all repressed around it, or you can want to fight back, right? Even though there's not really anything happening because in your psyche, there is this need to protect or defend yourself. You can come across to others as being aggressive or being pushy. When really it's just fear inside your psyche that you're you're wanting to protect yourself from something. So the shadow again is getting defensive and having that defensive nature. But if you are aware that these energies are mere catalyst, so you can train your muscles of leadership and how to take healthy action, these can be some of the greatest leaders ever because they can make things happen. <gasps> yep. Really, yeah, the strength, absolutely. One so, thing that helps oh. is to look at the, the 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 two planets that are involved and look beyond if it's a square or a trine or an opposition and look what what are the planets that are involved. You know, let's say it's a, a Saturn and Pluto, for example. These are some of the, the most intense planets of the whole zodiac, um, Saturn and Pluto. And let's say the Saturn and Pluto are connecting, whether if it's in a trine or in a conjunction or in a square, you can, that's another way of looking at it. Forget, forget the aspect it's making and just feel into the energy. This is the energy that is uh, communicating with you. And whether it's through a square or a trine, you can know that these are the energies that are alive for you. Because a lot of people, they can get scared of squares. And then in being scared of them, they can deny their power, deny the gifts that they are there to bring as well. And squares can be just as useful um, and helpful as conjunctions, for example, and depending on the planets even more as well. Yeah. Well, it certainly won't leave you alone. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you no, they do won't. take action. So it definitely builds that strength. And, and before we, uh, close, um, I want to hear Seth's, uh, thought. I just, another thing, just wondering about as, you know, having this amazing astrologer here that you are, about the power of progressions. Are they more powerful than the natal? And let, let's see what Seth has to say though about squares. And even if you don't know the chart, you know, you run into that, right? That tension, you know, that call to action. And, you know, your your life story is so much about that, that that pressure or that I need to act, I need to do something in this moment. Um, yeah, maybe speak to us on that and how you experience that. And then, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, Raquel, I'd love to ask about the power of progressions in comparison with the natal. So what are your thoughts? Seth? Honestly, I don't even really, I don't have a frame of reference for what a square is or trying or anything. I, I hear you guys talking about it and I know, but to me, everything is like feeling. It's just, I can sense it's feeling, it's energy. It's, and there's a part of me that is energy that we all are. And so I can feel that. And it's kind of like, 
the more true I am to myself, the more I get into coherence and live in that way, then these bigger things that are happening in the galaxy around us, they just like, you know how to conduct yourself in alignment with integrity based upon what's happening. Because like we've been saying since the beginning, we are choosing as individuals to do this work and if we're not making that choice, then we get worked and not in a threatening way, but in a way, you know, like Raquel was saying, it's time to be the leader of your own life. I mean, think about how many people don't really even lead in their lives. They're just a victim of circumstances. This is who I am. I wake up in the morning. I do this and then work and job. and people just live in that state of normalized perception that isn't really their perception to begin with it's all been this whole play almost like literally like a puppet's clay and when we take responsibility for how we perceive reality and recognize that this spark of life in every one of us will allowing every single part of our body our innate intelligence is so much smarter than i am so when i take my awareness and i start to harmonize it with what's allowing me to be where that's when growth happens that's when you're like wow okay it can be so much more than who i think i am so that's what and i do growth happens very easily with squares Mm. especially if you trust and allow it to happen you know the whole purpose of squares is to move you outside of your comfort zone <laughs> get you out of that car so you can roll up your sleeves and push the car forward and once the car gets going you see really how strong you are and then you're like okay well what's next that's where the leaders come from the great leaders come from seeing that they're able they're capable of pushing a car into action so the squares they really help us with evolution they really help us with new, with taking that next step. Whereas the trines, they can be more of a comfort zone and we can end up wow. taking them for granted. And yeah. they all have a time and place, you know, but the square really is that time where we see what we're made of. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, totally. With uh, a, a chart with like mostly blue lines, you find a person just just like, a, you know, somebody who might just have a lot of money, they take it for granted. Sometimes you take your blessings for granted. And it's the hardships that build the strength and character that, you know, help you achieve things and help you, you know, it just, yeah. And Not it doesn't say, mean that, that the trines make you happier. It doesn't mean that the people with more trines are happier than this at all. than the ones at the square, that doesn't equate to happiness. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, maybe the question about the progressions would just be like something between the two of us, but just if you could give a quick answer, like yeah, I love I love that you're throwing in just random yeah. uh, astrology questions with this this chat because a lot of people are actually interested in these questions. the uh, The question of the square is one of the questions I most get as an astrologer, by the way, both for my students as well as other people. So it's a great question. The progressed chart is, uh, you know, another great question. Many people here may not necessarily know what the progress chart is, but if you do know, uh, I want to say that as an astrologer, I honestly consider the progress chart to be just as important as the natal chart. And in my opinion, it's the number one chart after the natal chart, which is the foundation of who you are. It's the most important chart that you could work with is the progressions. Uh, now, the transits are also very important but the transits have their time and place. And if you're just looking at transits with the natal and not looking at the progressions, you're missing a huge chunk of the story. So the progressed chart is, what is the progressed chart? The progressed chart is your personal evolutionary cycle and it's your personal energies. And you can use the progressions to go back in time, into the future, Whatever point in time that you want to look at, these are the energies. The progress chart are the energies you were born with. So your natal chart in its current progression, in its current evolution. 
So it's everything you were born with. If you look at your progress chart, let's say for today, for right now, you're going to see everything that you were born with and where all of that is right now. So for example, you may have been born with a son in cancer, but in your current progression, that son, which moves very, 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 very slowly, very slowly, may not be in cancer anymore. And it might be, let's say, in Virgo or even in Libra. And that will determine a series of things about your life, your personality, the cycles you are opening to, part of your identity. Um, and so the, the progress chart is a very personal look at your energies that are evolving and moving because you're not stagnant. You're born with the natal chart, but what you were born with is not the same forever. You grow, you, you know, you go through puberty, you go through body changes, you go through life changes. So all these changes that you go through, they are marked by the progress chart. So you can see the very slow, again, it's a very slow movement of the planets, but there is a movement of the planets that you were originally born with. So you can see where that progression, that evolution is at, at any given time. And then finally, the right way to do it is you add the transits on top of that. That's when you fully see the bigger picture of the Is it better to look at the progressions in comparison with the natal or a standalone progress chart? I, I so I know people that do both, but I I do it together with the with the natal chart because together with the natal chart, you you just have that visual of you know you're you're really working in a sphere that is beyond time. So you're looking at what you were born with, where you're at now, and any of the transits that may be activating those points now or in the future. So yeah, yeah. Well, I, I know I've got uh, maybe for a one on one just. Uh, I'd love to ask you more questions about that, but Seth, what, what is the most important thing that you want to bring to the table here, uh, in this gathering, in this really incredible window of the eclipse happening April 8th and anything else that's kind of coming to mind that's really coming up for you recently? I mean, it's almost like it's all the same, but there's all these different variations of the same thing. And so to practice make an active practice of loving this spark of life that is in all of us that is the reason we're alive to me that's where it's at that's the most important relationship in my life bar none i mean mm -hmm. i don't know i mean when i'm judgmental i kind of see like isn't it everybody's most important relationship because when we don't have that conscious connection to what is causing all this to happen then who are we? Where are we? We're likely in the belief system that we are the socially indoctrinated individual who lives in a world that doesn't necessarily bring out someone's greatest potential. So have the courage to let go of everything you think you know create the incentive to have a deeper relationship with your own life force because just as it can cause all these miraculous functions to happen these complex bodily systems if it can do all that then the more we are deepening our relationship with it the more that we can see how it's leading us through this world as these leaders that we are whether they're whether we're just trying to make our way through our own day or, you know, somebody in big leadership roles, doesn't matter. Because to the degree that you have that relationship that allows everything to exist, that's where leadership comes from in my life. So. Oh, totally. There's so many different forms of leadership, you know, just leading by example. I just being true to who you are invites other people to, you know, match that energy versus dropping down and feeling, you know, isolated or alone. Just don't be afraid to just, cause other people like just appreciate that. They're like, Oh good. I'm glad somebody's saying it. Or I'm just glad y'all we're, we're not in this, like, I don't know, limitation or sub personality, you know, just something that we're following or some label that we've adopted. Um, and I think some people cling so tightly to it in these are times of, yeah, shaking that loose, like we're talking about. 
And there's so many forms of leadership. Some people would assume leadership means, you know, taking that microphone or like, you know, leading a, but no, it's just this, our energy leading by example, holding that, um, that light, that love, that truth, and uh, acknowledging the importance of embracing our darkness and not being afraid of it. Because when you were talking about Raquel, all the different events hitting the nodes, the T-squares, and the conjunctions that took place right before, you know, what hit, pandemic, um, putting people in the fear of death and that anxiety when it's really, you know, the death process of letting go of the old paradigm and going through this rebirth and moving through the initiations of what this awakening and ascension is all about. It's like, that's a form of leadership is to, uh, yeah, to come out the other end and still, you know, understand it and encourage people that it's never too late, right? I mean, do you feel that no matter what a person has decided that the power of these planets like Pluto, that's very alchemical, very much about transmutation, transformation, letting go and being reborn, the Uranus, Jupiter breaking down the mind control so we can connect with our higher self. Do you feel that's enough for the body to begin to match that and repair, even if it has been overtaken by a lot of these bioweapons and assaults? Yeah, absolutely. I think actually all of these uh, weapons, bioweapons and assaults that you're talking about, they actually have been preparing our bodies to be more resilient, to be stronger. We are entering a stage where we're opening the door to what superhuman means. So we've, we have to trust that, that we are being prepared for the next stage of human evolution. And I love what you said about leading by example. I love what you said because Aries really wants to take action. But the shadow of Aries can be impulsiveness and it can also be arrogance. So we need to be really careful with this eclipse in Aries, you know, because our emotions are going to be so flared up that we need to be careful not to be on reaction mode, like you also brought up earlier, because if we are in reaction, oh, there's going to be a lot of things to react <laughs> about. <laughs> or react from. So we want to be very mindful because when we are in reaction, we are wasting our energy. And that is part of the old paradigm. We don't want to do that. We want to conserve our energy so we can stand in our power and lead by example. So this is also why the highlight with Chiron is going to bring up the you know, situations and wounds and things where we may feel vulnerable about, but not for us to go into the shadow aspect, which is defense and arrogance and let's fight because you're going to see plenty of that out there. You're going to see plenty of people in their ego wanting to react and wanting to fight or fight back. And you don't want to be one more of those. You don't want to be in the pile of, oh yeah, those are the ones that are just throwing away their energy. You want to show that you are ready for the next stage of evolution, which is owning your consciousness, owning your energy. And that starts with owning your emotions, owning your fire so that you can then own your power. So it's all these step-by-steps and everything is absolutely perfect. All the preparations that we're going through to get to this stage is exactly how it should be. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, because it switches on just all these, you know, parts of ourselves that need to be challenged to be blown open. Without the challenge, you know, we, we like you said, we might be complacent. We might take things for granted. It's like we're being pushed to these, these into these growth periods because there's so much more of us than we can imagine that's been dormant. Chakras that we haven't even explored or some are like up here and haven't gotten grounded. I mean, that's the thing with unity consciousness. We all share something to activate in each other to really rebuild that 12 strand DNA. And I always correspond sort of the Zodiac, the 12 houses, and then the 13th sign with, you know, how we all carry a different unique sort of map. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we seek things to fill in maybe places that aren't activated in our chart to just, you know, light it all up. Or maybe if something doesn't hold a position in any houses, you know, empty houses, maybe we already completed that in a past life and we're here to experience something completely different to, to then have our soul experience help us to, you know, find the wholeness in it all. Cause you know, we're not just a Libra, we're not just an Aries. Of course we have the other planets, but you know, we, we hold a piece of every chunk of that pie. Um, and, and whatever we might not have in our chart, we might be in relationship to somebody else who does and experience that. And 
And I think almost it's like a treasure map bringing us into the zero point unified field where the patternings aren't pulling us this way and that way. We've gained some level of mastery. And I feel like that's so much about your book and what you've been doing, Seth. And um, and you as well, Raquel, just and and uh that that mindfulness and awareness is you know so huge in every step of this journey. Oh. <laughs> Well said, well said. <laughs> There's a lot of information for everyone to digest and let it sink in. But, you know, the truth is that on a core level, we're all aware of this. We're all aware of this truth. So we're just reinforcing that in you and encouraging you and inspiring you that this is the direction we're all heading toward. And we're all in this together. Beautiful. Well, I, I knew I would be completely like uplifted talking to you both. Um, so Seth, you were posting kind of about won't be fooled again, posting like the who thing. Here we are, April Fool's Day. And I know it's just, yeah, whatever anybody wants to make of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I almost feel like things that are failing us outside of ourselves are so that we learn to fall back upon ourselves, knowing that you know, it, whether it's a relationship that you have, whether it's friends, whether it's the larger picture and just getting like sick of, what's being blasted from outside or what you invested in that you realize maybe was built upon deception that, you know, these aren't failures or tragedies. This is an opportunity, you know, cause, cause why are we being pushed to the edge and everything seems to be deception? Not, I'm not saying like our soulmates and soul family or, you know, good friends, but you know, the system that's collapsing, it's not, it doesn't have to take us down with it. Right. It's a sinking ship, but there's plenty of life preservers and a really beautiful one moving in this direction that has to do with, you know, the willingness to fall back on yourself. And then in doing that, we we come together in such a stronger way as a community, not running those old programs of my way or the highway, or you need to follow me and think the way I do. And it's disguised. I mean, people don't realize that they're carrying a lot of those programs into what might seem to be a conscious community or, I mean, it's infected everything. So, you know, I, I think the betrayals and the deceptions and the things that we faced, um, again, is like that square or, or that challenge that, uh, well, what choice do we have left but to fall back on us? And then when we're living our truth, we attract those that are in resonance and that's how we all kind of find each other. And did you feel alone like Seth, and, and you answered this too, like, did you ever feel a feeling of isolation growing up, feeling, you know, you were perceiving the world differently? Did you have friends or family members that related? Or did you just utilize that feeling and created like a sacred space for yourself and just knew that something big was coming, you'd find more like-minded people? You know, I grew up in a hippie environment. Oh, right. Of course. Yeah. But it wasn't like that forever. You know, it was like that the first like 10 years of my life, I had the best childhood, loving parents out in the woods um, around amazing communities. But it wasn't until I got older and especially going to school, like institutional schools, the first day I ever went to one, I just knew that that's not where it's at. And I didn't understand why I even had to go back into it. So, yeah, like, you know, deep down, we all know whether somebody wants to admit it to themselves or not. We know why we're here. We know what we are able to do. And to the degree that we're willing to do what we're able is what helps us to evolve and grow and become more wise in the process. Right, Raquel? Something like that. Yep. <laughs> I was a complete outcast, complete loner with everybody, including my own family, <laughs> who until today, they, they, they see me as very, very, very different. <laughs> and of course, today we are, you know, we all love each other, but there's just not a lot of communication. Let's put it that way. Um, but I've always been that way since I was a little baby. And um, growing up, I was always the quiet one, the one without friends, the one without family, the one without anybody. <laughs> and of course, having so much Libra in my chart, including my moon in Libra, all I wanted was friends. <laughs> yeah. So it was really difficult. Um, I think I faced a lot of what many people face of feeling alone, feeling like nobody understands, feeling like, what am I doing here? Who am I? What is this world all about? Um, so I definitely, I went through a few decades of this uh, loneliness, 
and being an alien, quite literally, in society. <laughs> yeah. And I will say that it was because of this alienation, so to speak, that I was able to develop the wisdom that I have today. Um, and it was very, very difficult. I couldn't see it as that in the beginning, but every situation that would happen with me or around me, because I didn't have anybody to talk to about it, I would contemplate. And a lot of it was very introspective for me. So they were situations that I would either contemplate on my own or I would write poetry about or create music around and really go through a process of refining all that information that was coming to me and most of it was very painful you know I grew up in a cult so I have a very extreme background um, with a lot of abuse and a lot of tormented experiences but I processed them by myself and through myself and that allowed me to gain the wisdom that I have today. And it was only recently when I became an astrologer that then everybody wanted to be my friend. <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> how do I deal with this? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's funny. Oh, wow. I love it. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, because I think people, yeah, that are like starting to really crack open, you know, start to feel that way, it's, you know, just changes in friendships, changes in everything and gosh, and your upbringing and the strengths that you hold and the wisdom that you have and where you are today is just so inspiring. Um, yeah. So is there anything that we haven't brought up that you guys feel is important to share, whether it's about this eclipse or just what's been coming through lately, what you've been talking about, what you've been bringing to your meditations or what you've been bringing to your talks? Well, you know what? The Who song we were talking about, won't get fooled again. That's it, right? On April Fool's Day, we've all been fooled. We've all been foolish. We've all experienced every part of all of it anyway, and we're here now. We're in a state of being that allows us to really open up and become the potential that we all know we are. And part of that is being wise and mature with how much we're fooling ourselves. Now, I do like that there's chocolate bunnies around this time of year. Oh, no, that was yesterday, right? April. April Fool's was yesterday, right? Or no? Easter. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I'm super grateful. I know you guys are too. And yeah, it's time to eat more chocolate bunnies for me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, I think we covered everything. Um, but if I had to end on any note here, it really would be the the focus of the year of the dragon, which is just a passion of mine this year. Actually, I just started a new podcast this year called Awaken the Dragon um, and starting a program as well around this in June, really to help people understand this fire, this power. And it's not about being afraid of it. A lot of people are actually afraid of their own power, you know, or even misjudging of it, or they feel guilty about it, or they've been repressing it. You know, so this Aries eclipse is really about awakening this dragon, understanding this dragon, understanding this power, and then learning how to embody it, how to step into it in a healthy way that is actually going to effectuate change in the world. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most beautiful gifts that we can receive at this time yeah. to take that step into the future. I love that. Yeah, gosh, I think my final thoughts are, you know, that Aries, Mars energy. Sometimes people are, you know, just like ego, got to drop the ego. Or, you know, there's just a lot of negative ego, but, you know, the ego is such a vehicle of, of, of power. And as long as it's integrated with your soul, as long as you're being mindful and aware of what the wounds are, you know, that vehicle, you know, is, is a force of, you know, great change. And, and the changes we make within ourselves are, um, you know, how we influence the collective and, 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 you know, the direction it's heading. That's why, why would they bother with mind control? Why would they bother with indoctrination? Why would they bother with fake news unless they wanted to, you know, steer that part of us in a direction that serves them. And what's amazing. Yeah. With re reflecting on the Libra, cutting those cords and, you know, standing in the, I am presence, you know, what, what, where, where, where is that fire, you know, best directed um, without compartmentalizing it away from the other parts of who we are you know, we can begin to find ourselves again and, and drop the things that have 
taught us to be something that we're really not. And and whether you know, we feel wounded by the fact that that's happened or empowered by the fact that we woke up to it, we're moving in a direction that's healing. And this fire is very transformative. And it's totally, I love how you, you know, bring up the dragon. And yeah, so I'm really feeling good after talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure everybody else is. I really appreciate you being here with me today. And we'll put all the links in the description. And I know we got a lot of cool things coming. I think we're going to do some group calls, the three of us, where we'll take callers and answer questions, right? Fine. Yeah. And Ooh, Seth, you got some, some any any things that you guys are launching? Anything that you want to share before we close? For me, the meditations, we do it every Tuesday night, free. I'll put a link. You can join us in Zoom or we stream across five or six different platforms. But yeah, come do the meditation with us. Get in tune with your own innate intelligence and then watch what happens when we get a bunch of, uh, of us doing that together at the same time. We create change from the inside out. And it feels so good that not much else compares. So come join that. I'll put the links in it below. Beautiful. Yeah. And I, like I said, I have that new podcast called Awaken the Dragon. It's a weekly free podcast that speaks about the most important alignments of that week and all teaching you and helping you understand and embody this dragon fire, this dragon power that is available here. And so I will also add the links on the description um, and any other way to contact or have a session or things like that. Be a part of the community. Oh, very, very cool. Sorry. That's awesome. Thanks again, you guys, for being here today. Happy Eclipse to everybody. Yeah, yes. I love you guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.